Hey, I'm Jesse Peterson here with Let's Make Art. I'm a mixed media artist and I love art journaling and I have a fun project for you today. Oh. Thanks, Keenan. It says, you can't use up creativity. The more you use, the more you have. Oh. Because sometimes we can make things and think like, well, that was cool, but I don't know if I can do that again. Or like, I don't know, be really protective of our, our, our ideas or our work. And um, you always get more ideas. That's and the more true. that you flex that creativity muscle, the more creativity that you have, the more ideas that come, the more they flow. So that's what we're focusing on today. I like that. I'm gonna talk about the supplies and then we'll talk about the prompt and then we'll get started, okay? So supplies, we're gonna use this white linen, Dilutions paint. It's got one of those shaker balls in there, which I love and it disperses the paint really nicely. We're gonna use this lunar paste that we've been using <clears throat> and we're gonna water it down just to get kind of a nice and neutral in the background of that. We are going to use this watercolor pencil with our stencil and get kind of a different look. And this stencil is what we're gonna use. It's the honeycomb stencil that I created. And that's all those supplies. And then our tools that we're gonna need are going to be an X-Acto to trim this out. We're gonna kind of fussy cut some of that. A round eight brush and a palette knife and trusty yes paste. Ah, uh, yes. I'm using this big tub. If you get the subscription box and you get that little guy in there. And if you're not a subscriber and you're just kind of new here checking out this video you can do um, a simple layout like this with um, something that you find in a magazine and the colors of paint that you have around you so don't stress make something with us we would mm. love that yes totally <laughs> um <clears throat> okay so that's the supplies and um just to kind of recap uh the theme that we're working in is all about rituals and routines and um, how we adopt routines in our life and um, how we apply that to our art making practice. So today we're specifically going to be talking about creative routines and whatnot. And so our prompt says, and um, we like to mix up like techniques and prompt cards to get these kind of cool, fun art journal outcomes. So here we go. Creativity can be elusive. It may seem counterintuitive to create structure and habits around something as unpredictable as creativity. But believe it or not, just by committing to a regular block of time to work on something, you will be making the hard decisions about how and when to make art so you can get to the fun part faster. How can you show up for your art making process regularly, regularly that works for you? Are there things you can do to set the tone for your creative time? Make time to create something simple or silly that inspires you to make time to create. So that last part, we're just gonna make something fun and silly to inspire us to remember to make time to make art because it's fun to do it, right? And what better way to start by a little reminder? Yeah, and sometimes it's like, when I say like creativity can be elusive, it's like sometimes you show up and you make this cool thing and it came out of nowhere and it was awesome. And then another day you sit down and make art and everything is lame and you're like, what the heck? Like I thought I was creative and I don't like anything that I'm <laughs> making. But I have found that when I show up regularly to create, um, and in different seasons of my life regularly has meant something different, you know, like before I could, I could commit to a sketch in my art journal or my sketchbook every day. And that's not necessarily what works for me now, um, but different seasons of life. But the regular part, whatever that is, is what, what I mean by like showing up often. You know what I'm saying? Totally. So anyway, that is our prompt. And I like to take a deep breath before we get started making art and just appreciate that you set time aside to create. Like that's really awesome. And that's like the hardest part I feel like. So let's take a deep breath together. <sighs> Maybe roll your shoulders, just whatever feels good to kind of relax. Cause sometimes I get intense. I'm like, I set this time aside for art and I want to make something cool. And I have like an hour and I'm all like, Oh, like all tight and like just trying really hard. And that doesn't always work out for me. And sometimes I need that just for when I'm making these videos and hanging out with y'all to like slow down. So <laughs> definitely a pro tip. Yes. So this is what we're going to make. And I'm going to go over the steps that we're going to make it and grab my journal. We made this awesome page last time. So if you missed out on that, you can go check that out. It's our morning ritual that we were working on. Just going to bend back my paper here and whoop, clip it. If I can clip it. There you go. Actually, I might need it more on that side, just to keep that down flat. Yeah, I'm liking that. Mm. Okay. So let's get our, we're gonna start by tracing the honeycomb stencil in some areas on the edge with our 
watercolor pencil. And you can take this down if you want to keep it from shifting. I'm just going to tape mine down a little bit. I think I want this to go off the page. I'm actually going to, I'm going to move mine around. That's what I did last time. I'm just going to do this time. I love this tape. You can use washi tape, painter's tape, whatever you got that's not going to like rip your paper when you rip it off. Just something that's going to be gentle is great. This is that whole vine tape that I like. but And I think that's probably enough for me to do what I need to do because I'm going to move it around. So I'm going to grab my pencil. It's come already sharp and ready to go, which is great. I think these are made in Germany. They're just such good quality. And I'm just going to... I like the idea of having sort of like a hard outline line and then kind of shading it in. And I like to do that because this is a watercolor pencil, so when we put water over it, it's going to kind of have a neat effect. And I know that I like to have some contrast in there. So that's what I like to do. I'm just going to move this over so I can get my arm in here. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Now you could get really detailed with this and get it all perfect, but I kind of like it being a little darker in some areas and maybe lighter in others. It's very real. Yeah. We're human. We're humans. Mm-hmm. It's human made. Maybe I'll do this one really dark. Yeah, I like that. I like that stencil too, Jesse. It's cool. Thanks. It's just simple little hexies, but I like the idea of being able to use a stencil so that we can do texture paste like we did last time yeah. and just using it as a guide when you're trying to draw something repetitive. I mean, I enjoy like hand drawing repetitive things, but also I think this is kind of a fun way to achieve that same look. good about that maybe I want one more and it's okay you can move your stencil around to get whatever you're looking for but I think I want one more just like right in here and you can kind of do like a cross hatch kind of thing if you want to get more pigment on there if you're wanting it to be a little darker like mm. that it's cool because it can also almost look like it, it was stamped because how you're filling in some of them, you know? Mm -hmm. I like that. Okay, so it is a watercolor pencil, so we can add water to it. Yes. And kind of soften some of it and kind of get like a cool watered down effect here. Not in the cool. And that activates so well. Yeah, and if you don't want it to be as soft in other areas, you can just darken it and that pigment will get nice and dark and feel like it's more painted than penciled in and if you like the pencil lines you could totally leave it like that and not get it wet at all it's really just what you're mm. what you're into because without water it kind of has more of a sketch look huh yeah mm -hmm. and that's kind of why i like these pencils because they're kind of dual function flexible yeah get some different looks out of it. And I wanted you to be able to have, you know, some options, different options to do with your stencil as well, besides put texture paste in it, which is probably my favorite. This is <laughs> a close second and a fun way to use a stencil. Yeah, I think I want those kind of just bleed together a little bit. And that one can kind of fade off. I like this one being darker. And then these can kind of run together a little bit on the edge there. And if you're thinking like, oh, I kind of want a little more darker blue, 
on the edge, then you can pencil that in and come and soften that like that. And maybe I'll put a little bit right in here too, just to help blend that. This whole process made me feel so calm. I'm almost like whispering. I'm like, am I even talking? <laughs> I'm just so <laughs> chill. I love that about art, that it's got such a calming effect for me as soon as I start painting. Yeah. Mm, that's good. That's this nice. Thing. Yeah, so it's just kind of fun way to mix things up. Okay, and now we're going to use our lunar paste. I dropped my, I did. Oh, goodness. I'm going to get a little bit of this lunar paste and I put it right on my palette. I'll move that over a little bit. Woo. I'm just going to wipe this off because I'm going to use that for my yes paste later too. And my white because I I'm not looking for like a super gold situation here. I just wanted to tone the paper a little bit. And when you're mixing a light color with white, it's good to take the darker value and bring it in to the white than the other way around because it takes a lot more white <laughs> to make a blob of this darker color what you're mm -hmm. looking for, if that makes sense. Okay. Pro tip, add the darker color a little bit at a time to the puddle of white. That helps a lot till you get the desired color that you want. And I'm gonna try to mix myself a good amount so I don't have to remix it. But that means you have to work fast because this paint will dry and then you'll be like, oh, I mixed all that and it's dry and I gotta mix it again. So mm. it's just the nature of acrylic paint. Mm. But we're not gonna worry too much. We're just gonna get in there and get going here. And I'm just gonna bring this in around what I did and then I'm gonna get a good amount where I want it and then I'm gonna soften these edges in just a second. So I'm gonna rinse my brush and then I'm just gonna move that in there. And if you want it to kind of mix in, you can do that. If you wanna avoid the blue, you can That's do that That's a nice too. color. Thanks, just kind of like a nice little subtle yeah. tone of the paper. It still has a teeny bit of shimmer to it, which I like. I was going to ask if it does, actually, because that would be a really awesome added benefit for that. It's just subtle, you know, which I like. Now, I know I'm going to put my black and white girl here in the middle, so it's going to cover most of this up. But just to be consistent and not have to worry about exactly where I'm going to um, paste her, I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to go for it. Nice. Yeah, see so I got a little more gold in there, and so it's a little more shimmery in that area, which I'm liking. And that's a good gold. There's not, there's nothing wrong. I feel like there would be nothing wrong with a splash of really aggressive gold occasionally with the little blue. Mm-hmm. I would like that. And this paste is thicker, so if you're wanting a more translucent look, that gets to be a little tougher, which is why I just like mixing it with white paint, because the white paint is less, um, it's not as thick, it's, uh, viscosity is not as much, so it kind of cuts your paste down in thickness when you're mixing it. But water is a little bit harder because it's such a thick paste, it doesn't really water down like our regular paint does. Cause it's texture based, you know? 
I'm liking that. I didn't really put much water on this blue guy. I'm going to get him in there. And so you can do that at this stage and it will blend in more too. So it's still got some of our paint with a little blue in there. Which I'll kind of come into it. I like that too. I feel like the blue and this gold are such good colors together. And if you, thank you. If you lose some definition that you're like, oh man, I kind of like time of that, you can go back in with your pencil if it's dry, it's not quite dry yet. Yeah, and add it back. So you can just kind of play back and forth with that until you get the result that you want. And if you're thinking like, oh, I want a darker value, same. You can go back in, add it, and then hit it with your water on your brush again and keep going with that. So super simple, nothing too crazy, but kind of a fun technique. I love that technique. That page in my book is almost done, you know? Yeah. I'm just gonna add a little bit more paint. There, so I'm feeling like it needed it. It's also nice to kind of leave some spots that are a little lighter in value too. But I know I wanna go back over this with the white dot, so I like the idea of there being a darker enough value so that there'll be contrast for those dots when I Go back in and add them. Mm. And I like to start with a lighter value and add like more dark as I go instead of just going dark because it's hard to come back from that you know it's easier to work up your value it's hard to come back from the dark side <laughs> okay well we're just going to put this aside for a minute and let it dry while we work on our other elements of the page I like cutting out her and this is one of those times when you're going to use an exacto you could use scissors you could not worry about getting this negative space out, but that's why I like to use an exacto because I can get in on those things. And when I have something um, a little more intricate like this, um, I like to decide when I'm cutting it just to simplify that shape for myself because nobody knows that her hat look like that and we can make it whatever we want. True. So I'm actually gonna start with it here. I'm just gonna trim this off for now so I can use it later. And then I can kind of move my girlfriend around easier. I'm just going to go for it. One thing that I like to do is instead of trying to go right between the image and the white space, I like to come in just a little bit so then I don't have to worry about any white stuff to trim off later. That's something I wouldn't have thought of, and I'm glad you said that. Because you've said that before. Mm -hmm. And... I don't, I don't know if you said this specifically, but it makes it pop off the page way better, I feel like. Yeah. It's just a, it's just a little bit easier, and it's okay if like, to cut into your shape a little bit. Nobody knows. It's fine. Like this ring that she has on, I'm not trying to cut that ring out. I'm just going to go right where her finger is and just keep moving along. But if you want the ring, go for it. I just didn't think it was going to add much to my situation. And if you're struggling with your blade at all, change it. Because if sharp blade is going to make all the difference, and it's so easy to do. Whenever you get a good blade around. I like that these um, handles come with the extra storage space. And I had some blades in there, but I can't remember. Which oh. one is my new blade? Oh, dear. <laughs> It's this one. That's the old guy. Because I broke the tip off of it. And ah. I can tell that it's more used. And you just want to make sure you dispose of your blades safely. If you don't have a container like that to put your blades in, I like to just wrap them up in tape because I don't want it to throw it away and then 
have someone cut their hand on the garbage cut bag. Yeah. So let's be safe with our knives. Make sure when you get your blade on there, it's nice and tight. It's not going to slip or slip around on you like that. Sometimes my grip moves, so it's hard for me to know. Is it tight? I kind of get it. <laughs> <laughs> Slippery fingers. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm gonna come back in here. Oh, this is way better. Oh, nice. You can tell the difference immediately. Mm -hmm. Sharp blade makes all the difference. So if you're struggling with cutting and you're like, man, I don't know about this exact edge. Jesse's always using it and it's so hard. Changing your blade might be one way to improve it. Another is just, I've been doing this for a long time, so I've got a little bit of practice, but just keep, keep Drawing going. with a blade? Mm-hmm. I've really enjoyed using a, a knife, a craft knife this way. And turning your paper around. Like, don't force yourself to be in a weird, uncomfortable position. Like, move your paper, move your arm and your hand however you need. To yeah, you're the boss. Yeah. I like to turn my page like this and just cut it. That helps sometimes. Sometimes, not just depends on what the shape I'm trying to cut is. I'm not gonna miss that little bit. So I'll go back in there. Sorry, I'm getting all over the place. It's probably hard to follow. There we go. I think we understand that you're cutting this lady out of the paper. Mm -hmm. And and you're just cutting right into her hat. Yeah. That's she so saved funny. up for that hat. She it's did. part of the outfit, you know? She did, but she's going to be okay. She shouldn't have taken a picture of it because we're going we're gonna to art journal with it now. Mm -hmm. It's our she hat. She should feel honored. She should. I think she is. That's why she wore it, actually. In the very first art journal video that I did, we had, a, we had everybody take a picture of themselves and put it in their journal, and then we journaled around it. Mm -hmm. And so you could do that with this, too. You could put yourself in your journal. And if you Ooh. want some tips on that, go check out that video, because there's some, I shared a, like a, a fun and different way to journal around that. Yeah. I think it was called All About Me, right? Is that what it was yep. called? You guys can go find that one, it's a good one. I love whenever I get a long stretch of straight line because it's like easier. It's almost like when you're driving a car and you want to go a little faster on a country road and you hit it straight way, you're like, yeah. <laughs> this is what I've been dreaming of. <laughs> Dukes of Hazard, here I come. Yeah, Dukes of Hazard, exactly what I was thinking about on that straight cut. Perfect. Gotta get her pinky. I think her pinky is so cute how she has her hands like that. So cute. Okay, well, we're gonna cut this negative space out. And if you decided you wanted her to be tall, you could cut this out, but I think I'm gonna end up placing her somewhere in there anyway. So I'm not gonna worry about that, but I'm gonna cut this part out. This is tricky, so I'm just gonna take some concentration here. Let me just zoom through it though. Precision cutting. Mm -hmm. That was Jesse's nickname in high school, actually. <laughs> My nickname was Jesso. Oh. <laughs> Precision Jesso. 
is what I meant to say. I don't actually think I got the nickname Jesso until college when I just had it all over my clothes all the time. <laughs> If you could give yourself a cool nickname, what would you give yourself? Uh, I used to call myself Jack. Yeah? Yeah. Why? Because it's my middle name and I hated my first name. But then I realized that there are several Jacks and not very many Keenans. And so then I realized <laughs> I like my first name much more. How old were you when you decided that? Uh, I was probably, when I started calling myself Jack, I was probably like before I was 10. <laughs> Maybe eight to twelve-ish, ish, a little bit. It never stuck though, because always no one ever wanted to call me that. Because it, <laughs> they're be already weird. used to your other name. Yeah. And then I, I realized around you know twelve, thirteen, Keenan's better than than being called by your middle name. You know. I like it. Keenan's a unique name. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna cut out the paintbrush. Same deal. Concentrate. I printed this in house, so it might look a little different than our other paper. That's okay. Just gonna just. Go for it real fast. I like that toaster. <laughs> That's a fun one. And you could even do something different and put your paintbrushes coming out of your toaster. I did that on our oh, prop card. Fun. But I just thought that could be a fun option if they don't want to do, you know. I just like giving you options. <laughs> Get crazy. <laughs> Thank you. you. Put it coming out of your alarm clock. Or you could cut some of them down, maybe, like that. Yes. Have it coming out of your teacup. And I think it's important to combine other rituals that maybe they already have going, like routines. Um, like I kept, I kept us, Ooh, it's got some, we got some rain. It's some ambience here. I'd be able to hear that. <laughs> I don't know if they can hear it, but I just can hear it. That's super loud. <laughs> uh, breaking news y'all, that <laughs> rainstorm turned into a powder power outage. And so, uh, we lost a little bit of video, but most of it's safe. So we're just gonna keep going. Cause my glue is awesome. It's still <laughs> workable, uh, even though it's been a minute. Thank you. Yes. Paste. Okay, so Keenan looked at what we got, and um, I was in the middle of tearing this when the when all the lights went out. Yes, <laughs> when it got all, dark. When everything shut off. <laughs> Apparently, we lost footage. It's been a whole ordeal. Okay, so I was talking about how I was tearing this, and then I think it's, um, I wanted it to taper, so I tore it some more, kind of going down. And what I actually did was I laid this girl on top of what I tore and I used my pencil and I kind of gave myself a guideline of where her arms were so that I could tear it within that so that I could just have this really awesome kind of blended effect there. Did I cover everything that we did? I'm pretty then, sure, yes. And then I, I really wanted to glue my paintbrushes at the back of her head first so that I wouldn't have to like put that down and then try to figure out where I wanted it. I wanted to be able to center her with her fun <laughs> I just love this. Her creativity <laughs> yeah. crown. So my glue is still sticky, which is amazing. This is why I love Yes Paste. So if anything, this is just like it's yeah, commercial it's, break for Yes Paste. It's been about five minutes since the power went out. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, and it's still good. So we're just gonna keep on trucking here. And we gotta put glue on your paintbrush crown or whatever too because we glued it to the back of her, but we didn't put any glue on it yet. So just keep pushing this around. I guess we're living on the edge now. Who knows if we're gonna we keep are. power. We keep hearing thunder. Who knows what's gonna happen? <laughs> but I do love journaling in the rain. I mean, it's pretty great like to hear that in the background. It's so calming. It's calming. Until you think you're gonna have a power outage. And then... Yeah, I was happy with the rain. Now I'm like, oh no, <laughs> what else oh, could no. we lose? Oh, no, no, no. Oh, oh no, no, no. Look, no, all no. you're seeing more off actually saying. Ha, ha. You're yeah. influencing me. Booyah. I was just thinking of, I don't know, a video or something I saw recently that had that on there. The vi I don't know. I'm gonna stop talking now. I'm just going to do art. Okay, this is <laughs> let's stick with what I know. Okay, so I have sufficiently blended the old glue that I did a few minutes ago with the new, the new glue. 
yes paste to be. And I just like the idea of there being some nice even air above the top. So I'm just gonna. I want, should I go right, left? No. Isn't that awesome that you can just move it around? Choose just, where you want it. Yeah, it's pretty yes. cool. It's All right, my hands are sticky. Oh dear. Glue removal in the paint water. That's what I do. I'm, I'm sure there's a more better way to do that, but there you know, if you have a sink around. There can't be. There can't be a better way to do that. <laughs> it works for me. All right, go with it. Okay, just so just press that down firmly. Make sure that you don't have anything coming up. I got a little glue there, so I'm just gonna wipe it off. You don't wanna be like too aggressive because it might like, I don't know, pull out your paper or whatever if you got glue on the top, but I'm being, I'm being gentle. All right, then I'm just gonna flip my page around, fold that back like this. Mm. And I'm just gonna cut that, trim that off right with my page. Skirt. Trimmed. There we go. Oh yeah. And if you like it right here, you could stop. But I can't help but want to put a fun quote on it. So that's what we're gonna do next. Oh yeah. I'm like, where's my clip? It's holding that other page down. I needed it to hold this page down. And if you got, I'm just going I don't know if I told you guys this. If you got a little glue on your mat while it's still like this, it's easier to get it off. And just water. Isn't that cool? Just water. That's all I got on here. And a paper towel. And we're good. I forgot to bring my cutting mat down to the studio. And I borrowed the one that they have out in the front of the store, so I don't want to be giving it back dirty, you know? Hmm. All right. Okay. Okay. I'm going to put the top on back on my yes paste so it doesn't dry out. Pro tip. And that's a, so that's a very crucial pro tip. <laughs> I mean, you know, that's all right. So next we're gonna do this and um, whoop, Her sticky legs. skirt, get out of there. Trying to get back in the action. <laughs> <laughs> um, I kind of planned this out when I was doing it. So like I thought about like, I want you and then can't use, and I did it on a piece of paper. So if you have a different quote that you want to use, um, you can kind of plan it out. Like, you know, try to just look at the shape that you're drawing it in and see what fits and then do it. Um, I also put the same quote right here. So if you're not into lettering, but you still want that quote, I got you, I got you, mm. you got options. Um, okay, so now we're gonna dispense our white paint and we're just gonna go for it. I've done this a couple times and it turned out a little different each time, so it's okay. It's okay. I just had an idea. What's your idea? If you wanna practice with your quote before you glue her down, after you cut her out, before you glue her down, you could trace her on a different piece of paper Oh my gosh, yes. Yeah, and then you could play with that shape. Yes, that is a genius idea. Thank you, Keenan. I welcome. love that. So smart. I don't, I don't know why I didn't think of that. I made it so much harder for myself. But since I've already done this quote here, you can kind of look at that yeah. as a reference if you want. So I'm gonna just get nervous. <laughs> Y'all, I get nervous sometimes when I do art. Just like you. Just it's because of the thunder. You're not alone. I'm like, is the power gonna go out next? <laughs> Living on the edge. Okay, I'm, I'm looking at the Y and I'm wanting it on this side of her shirt. So I'm gonna start right here with that Y and then I'm gonna drop the O right here and then I'm gonna do U like that. So that's my plan, I'm going for it. My hand's shaky when I get nervous. <laughs> do you wanna take a deep breath? <sighs> Let's just take a deep breath together. You can take two deep breaths during like, your art journaling. It's if okay. If you want, you can take more than two. <laughs> <laughs> we suggest breathing throughout it's the project. Kind of, it's kind of good. I know sometimes when I get concentrating, <laughs> I'm all like tits. I forget to breathe or blink and my eyes start watering. So I wouldn't recommend that. And don't water down your paint. Like, because this paper is just regular paper. It's not mixed media paper that we're um, trying to paint on. So the more thick your paint is, the less likely it's going to get weird. So I just barely wet my brush. I'm loving that. Why? And if you don't want like a really thick 
line don't press so hard because when you press hard on your brush it gives you a thick line when you press lighter it gives you a thinner line so that's what we're going for and if you want to use a smaller brush um, that could also help with the because this is around eight we can get a small line but it's not like super small by any means okay and then I'm gonna do my C right here And I like the idea of my T kind of coming into the space, so I'm going to have it come all the way up. I'm going to do that. And I just barely got enough space for my little, what do you call it, thing in between the N and the T. Apostrophe. Thank you. Just couldn't think of it. Apothecary. <clears throat> and then, so this is kind of a crazy space. It's like, how am I going to get a U-S and an E in there? So I'm going to make my U a little bit, and then I'm going to have my S kind of drop down, and then I'm going to just squeeze in my E between the E and the... I don't know where her sh the space. Yeah, I don't. I was trying to try the to describe that frontier. space. I don't know what it is. Well, so got my S. I think it's just so fun to do lettering like this, where you kind of just play around with fitting it in a space. Yes. And then I'm gonna. I'm gonna make up look cute, so I'm just gonna go for it. And I want this to take up more space because up is just on its own line, so I'm going to make my P kind of do a little loop de loop. A little loop de loop. Mm, I like that. Thanks. And if your paint's looking a little transparent in spots, you can always go back over it. You can't use up. I have to keep saying whatever I'm writing because I'm scared I'm going to mess it up. Okay, now creativity. That's a long word, but we got this. Okay. I believe. <laughs> I get nervous when I have letter. You got it. <laughs> it's so fun. Oh, I love just writing over pictures like this. I think it's so cool. Still got some thunder in the background. I don't know if y'all can hear it, but it sounds kind of cool. It's faint. Sounds like a cart rolling across a wooden floor. Oh. Again, with how I had the T kind of come up into that space, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to have it be kind of a tall T. Here comes some more rain. We'll see what happens, you guys. Wish us luck. <laughs> v. I. Got to got to get the letters the right letters yes. to spell the right word. It's easy to it's easy to miss a letter when you're concentrating. Cuz I'm not thinking about making a letter, I'm thinking about making a shape, so it's more like I'm drawing yeah. than I am writing. Right. And we're gonna squeeze in that Y right there. We did it, we got creativity in there. That's the hardest part. You got, mm -hmm. you did it, you did it. <laughs> we did it. Just remember to keep dipping your brush back in your paint so it doesn't run out. Ooh, another way you could do this if you don't want to do cut, trace, then, yes, paste, you could do pencil first. Yeah. Like a light pencil. Mm -hmm. The more you use, that's what we're doing now. And I'm going to make my Y kind of be a fun Y. Kicking it over there. Mm -hmm. 
the more you use, the more you have. Almost done. I'm going to do another wide. That's kind of fun. Just going to make sure I have room. There we go. And then I kind of like the idea of, I'm just going to go over that V again, there we go. I like the idea of kind of underlining that U. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Okay, and then I kind of thought it was fun to just sort of decorate her with some dots. and just kind of accentuate the lighter ink. So if you're into that, go for it. If you like it how it is, you do you. Yes, the preferred method is you do you. <laughs> I just like the idea that maybe I know that we're painting on top of a photo and I think in, in itself that's cool but it's also kind of imagine amazing to imagine that maybe her dress could have been painted like oh, totally. like if I was gonna paint someone's dress to have something on it, it would look like this maybe <laughs> okay and now because you know I love dots and adding details I'm just gonna put a couple of white dots in this area Ah. Too. Just to kind of, I don't know. I don't know. I just like it. I don't. I don't have a reason. Okay, I'm doing it. I think it's. I think it's because I like those stars and I like it kind of continuing on. That's why I like it. I knew I had a reason. I just love this. This is so fun. We're almost done. Dots. A couple more dots. Brush. We did it. Ooh. You can't use up your creativity. The more you use, the more you have. <laughs> I think this is just such a good reminder for us because sometimes we can get stuck. Like I was saying earlier, like. I made this cool thing, but then I, the next day I showed up to create, uh, it didn't turn out that good, you know? Like, and it can feel, creativity and painting and doing these scenes can kind of feel like not consistent, but that's okay. Cause the more we show up, um, the more we have like this Zen art making mindful experience. So even if it doesn't turn out how we want, we can still have like this cool moment, you know? And we get, we practice and we get better and we start having more ideas because the more that we paint, the more ideas that come and flow and whatever. And it's just so cool. And I really do think that deciding to have a regular time to create is like 
really helpful in your creative practice. And I, that's what I love about art journaling because you can just keep showing up and um, putting things in your journal and creating and you can learn from doing that regularly. And I can't wait to see what y'all made with this. And I love it when you share your art with us and you can do that on our Facebook group. Um, you can find it at Let's Make Art Journals. You can also find us on Instagram with that hashtag. Um, it's just such a privilege to create with you and paint with you and just love being here with you. Thanks so much for painting with us. We'll see you next time.